Hi there, I'm Jamie Wake and you've chosen to start your day the gay way by watching Outcast TV. The show that reports the old news, lets me and my views and lets us discuss our issues. Without further ado, these are just some of the LGBT news stories that have recently come out of the closet. The Ugandan government on Wednesday said that it will ban at least 38 non-governmental agencies it says are promoting gay rights and recruiting children into homosexuality. Ethics Minister Simon Lakodo claims that they have investigated them thoroughly and have found their sponsors and will ask them to step aside and stop pretending to work in the name of human rights. He accused the agencies of pretending to provide social services and said that they were receiving funds to promote homosexuality. The organisations, both international and of course local, will lose their registrations and will no longer be able to operate in Uganda, although he did not name the groups on the list. As widely reported, being gay in Uganda is illegal, as it is in most African countries, and there is currently legislation pending in Parliament that could potentially deliver even harsher punishment sorry, to people who are gay. At one point, the bill, internationally known as the Kill the Gays Bill, included life imprisonment and even the death penalty. That provision was dropped under intense pressure from donor countries, but several Ugandan politicians still plan to push it through Parliament. But in a strange statement released on Friday, it said, well the government says that it does not discriminate against people of a different sexual orientation. It was signed by Simon Lakodo. Since Outcast TV began, we seem to be bringing news stories almost every week about the harassment faced by our brothers and sisters in Africa. The statement on Friday is signed by the same person who is closing groups down. I mean, are we missing something? I myself have wept at video footage on YouTube that showed gay Africans being tortured to death. This has to stop. In the UK, Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg has issued a warning to those Tory MPs and church leaders who opposed marriage equality that they will not succeed in blocking plans to legalise it. He insisted that it was when, not if, the law is changed. The Home Office consultation exercise that ended last week is believed to have received more than 100,000 responses, but a large majority is thought to be against the proposals. Ministers suspect that large campaign groups, including Catholic Voices and the Coalition for Marriage, have organised many of the submissions. Lib Dem leader Mr Clegg also became the most senior politician to record a video message of support for the Out for Marriage group and has been joined in supporting the LGBT community by the pop star Cheryl Cole, who said she didn't understand why gay marriage was such a big deal. The consultation may be over, but we mustn't stop pressurising our MPs, especially if they're Tory. Bigotry and homophobia has no place here in the UK, and a free vote doesn't hide the homophobes. And we need to address those elected MPs that do vote against equal marriage. After all, we vote for them too. Nick Clegg believes the Tory MPs should not be whipped, but I wouldn't be surprised if one of two of them are being whipped on a regular basis already and just don't want to be outed. I mean, what's that particular saying? They doff protest too much? That said, there are a number of vocal Tory MPs who are supporting marriage equality, and of course, we are very welcome. I just can't wait to see how my MPs in Reading vote. The largest student organisation in Northern Ireland, the NUS USI, has called for Health Minister Edwin Poots to step down from his post over his refusal to allow gay men to give blood. He's coming under pressure to explain why gay men in Ireland cannot donate blood while blood stocks from other parts of the UK are used to treat patients in Northern Ireland. The student pressure on Poots comes as a Northern Ireland blood transfusion service have been reconfirming that it's vital that as many people as possible attend donation sessions and warn that a fall in support at blood donation sessions could be very serious. Last November, a lifetime ban on gay men donating blood was dropped in England, Scotland and Wales in light of evidence produced by the Advisory Committee on the Safety of Blood, Tissues and Organs. At the time, Mr Poots refused to implement the changes in Northern Ireland as he said he wanted to examine all of the evidence before making a final decision.
He announced at the weekend that the ban will stay in place and he would like to extend it to anyone, male or female, who is involved in high-risk sexual behaviour. I personally am very surprised that our so-called lifting of the ban in the UK is considered the position to want to be in. To me, the condition that to give blood, me as a gay man can't have sex for a year, makes this a ban, well, makes a ban a ban under a different name. If a straight man sleeps with a prostitute, then he can still give blood. A bisexual man can have sex regularly with a man and a woman, and yet he and the woman he sleeps with can still give blood. Sounds mad to be true, but then again, it's my blood. You can't have it. No equality, no blood. Simples. On Friday, Hindu majority Nepal has announced that it will issue identification cards with three categories for gender, male, female and others. Historically, people who identified themselves as transgender said that they were unable to apply for jobs or get education without the cards and that by getting a card it forced them to choose one specific gender. The move comes four years after the Supreme Court ordered the government to draft new laws or change old ones that discriminated against gays, lesbians, transgender people. Homosexuality remains a largely taboo subject in Nepal, which is a conservative nation where homosexuals were once arrested or beaten, but has re become increasingly gay-friendly since emerging from a decade-long Maoist-led civil war in 2006. That's great news for, news for trans people in Nepal, but I'm going to be honest with you and say it's an area of confusion for me, and I always naively believe that people would transition from one gender to another. As you can see, even within the LGBT community, we still have so much to learn from each other. But here's something I shamefully don't need to learn about. Close to hitting 1 million users a day, Grinder is poised to receive a huge facelift this summer, which we rolled out against the iOS, Android and BlackBerry platforms. Grinder's mobile apps have attracted more than 4 million people to date across all platforms, and it's used in 192 countries. Its new features will include navigation with a slide-out menu, a new interface for um, searching for men, a new chat screen and a better filter option for narrowing down your search results. It will also feature a new profile field for communities such as bears and jocks to help people find their type better. I guess most people know that I love Grindr, so I'll give you a full review once this new version is released. My final fault of the day revolves around education. Not only is that the education of people outside of the LGBT community so as to combat discrimination in all its forms, but to educate ourselves. In reality, we're almost segregated ourselves from each other. There are venues for gays, venues for lesbians, and venues for trans people. How are we really going to learn from each other? There's also the education of those people coming out, coming out of the closet door. They don't know about the atrocities of the Stonewall riots. They don't know about the fear that existed amongst the LGBT community before homosexuality was decriminalised. They don't know that it was a drag queen's refusal to show ID that prompted the riots that led us to finally starting to fight for equality. It's just a fault, but it's one that seems to be repeated and repeated around my brain. That's it for this show, but please keep in touch and let us know what you think about these stories and others. And you can do that by email using info at outcast-tv.co.uk. Don't forget to leave your comment below and if you're watching this through Facebook, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Outcast LGBT TV. As usual, all of the links are coming up at the end of the show. Thanks for watching and whatever your plans this weekend, keep safe, keep warm and keep being fabulous. I'm Jamie Wake, this was Outcast TV and you are very kind for watching. Take care and until next time, see ya.